In this video, we will see how to do grouping based on dates. Our data is simple. First column is date, next is number and then text. I have sorted it on the date column. Earliest date we have is 6th October 2014 and last date is 11th July 2016. I am able to show top and bottom because I have used split. Let's start by creating a pivot table in tabular mode. Let's add amount in the value area and date in the row area. You will notice that this got grouped automatically. That's because I'm using Office 2016. In earlier version, grouping does not happen automatically. It will look like this. In effect, it is showing me on a daily basis how much revenue or business happened. Now we want to group it. Right click and group. This dialog looks more comprehensive and that's because we may want to see dates at different levels of granularity. So, month is already selected. I'm just going to click on quarter and years and the job is done. This is good, but not always applicable. The problem is with the quarters. You'll notice that quarter one begins at Jan and the year also begins in Jan. The problem is, in real life, financial year may begin in a different month depending on the country. So, if you have a financial year which begins in April, July or October, then this quarter, this month is not going to work. Because if my financial year begins in April, this is my first month. Pivot table cannot handle a fiscal year which starts anywhere other than Jan. So, it is of limited use. Later, we will see how to handle that situation by creating our own fiscal years, quarters and months and using VLOOKUP. Now notice that originally we had just one column called date, but it has automatically added two more fields called quarters and years. And because they are fields, I can just play with them like any other pivot table field. So maybe I want to see it like this, in which I get a comparative analysis across months of what is happening. Another way to do it is just keep the date column, which has now been converted to a month column, and then we can see sort of seasonal variation across years. So when I say Jan here, it is not just Jan of a particular year. It has combined that month across the years available in our data. Now let's group by weeks. So I remove month quarter here, choose days and make sure I choose these to seven. Now we get weekly grouping as well. Now notice that all this is working because our raw data containing the date column has consistent date values in them. Let's try a similar thing in another piece of data where I have one cell empty. Now if I create a pivot table, it's not going to work because when I add a date column here, in older versions of pivot table, if I say group, generally it will give you an error saying we cannot group by that column. So be sure that there are consistent date values in all cells. Now let's see an example where we have date and time being taken into account. I have department and date type. Let's assume this was a call log. So users escalated a problem to this department on this date and this time. Let's create a pivot table in tabular view. I'm just going to add the department for counting purpose in value area and put date time in the row area. Here for one day, there are multiple entries because the timestamp is different. And now you know how to do it very quickly. Most of us would go to the raw data, add a column and somehow try to remove the time portion. That's absolutely not required. Let's go to group, choose days, remove months and make sure day is one. That's all there is to it. So it combined 40, 39, 52 entries in a single click. Now having done that, let's say I am managing these calls coming from customers and I want to know what is the call volume by hour because then I can allocate my resources accordingly. I will need to do an hourly call volume analysis, which is absolutely easy now. 
I go to grouping again. This time I choose hours and remove days. And now I can get a complete picture as to how this is done. In fact, to understand it better, I can create a line chart which shows me the pattern. So I can clearly see there is a peak at 11 a.m. and another one at 11 p.m. Now Excel is not going to tell me the reason behind it, but it has given me enough clue as to what I should look for and what action I should take. Now you may also notice that this 12 a.m. is across the days. It's not one particular day's 12 a.m. I may want to see it by day and by hour, which is very easy now. I continue to choose hours, but also put days there, and then I get this kind of breakup. If you are doing something really time sensitive, there is of course facility to go all the way up to seconds level for further analysis. That's how we do grouping on dates. It offers a lot of flexible options which should satisfy most of your business needs. So that's it for now. We'll meet again in the next lecture.